A little girl sexually assaulted and murdered. Now tonight, investigators are opening up like they've never done in the Jody Parrott case. WSBT 22 Suzanne Spencer has covered this since police arrested Daniel Furlong last year. And Suzanne, we've all heard the awful details about what happened to Jody. Imagine being the investigator sitting in the interrogation room as Daniel Furlong confessed to exactly how he killed the 11 year old. It's something that still haunts them today. And she said, please let me go, let me go. I said, honey, I can't let you go right now. Words that send chills down anyone's spine. You can't help but um, feel that in your own heart. That's something I will always remember. For eight years, the Jody Parrott case was open and raw in the mind of these investigators. It's hard to put that on words. It was something that we all had waited for for a long time. It was evening, November 8, 2007. Jody's mother was the one who found her 11-year-old daughter with marks around her neck and wrists, not breathing. She was wearing the same black sweater she wore earlier that day. No trace of her killer. Investigators did find blood and saliva on Jody's chest and sweater. Here's what police told WSBT 22 back in 2007. We have his DNA, and uh, we just want the rest of them. And we're going to find the rest of them. In 2011, Michigan's cold case team took over. More DNA tests than any other case in the state. 2,000 tips, four investigators, one of those, Trooper Brian Fuller. I have a daughter that is the same age as Jody would be. And you can't help but um, feel that in your own heart as it relates to your own, your own personal being. July 2015, Daniel Furlong struck again. He lured a 10-year-old girl into his garage, tried to tie her up, and later admitted he was going to kill her. She got away. He was arrested and voluntarily gave his DNA. And for the first time, they had it to test in Perrick's murder. One phone call from the DNA lab, and Lieutenant Chuck Christensen knew. Tell me we got a hit. And she said, yeah, you're not going to believe it. We did. All of the sudden, investigators were on the brink of what would become the most critical break in the Jody Parrott case. Furlong's DNA was an exact match to the blood and saliva found on Jody's chest and sweater. That's when my heart was beating and you, you, get, you get ramped up psychologically. He then had the job of telling Daniel Furlong at his White Pigeon home the evidence against him was solid. How do you explain your blood being on her? I can't. I don't think it's my blood. You're going to have to. It is. There's no question about that. You could see the, the color drain from his face. He started shivering uncontrollably. He knew that we knew it was him, without a doubt. Mr. Furlong's uh, urges, or whatever it was that sparked him to strike again, basically, led to his demise in the solving of the of the Jody Parrick investigation. I don't know, oh God, what did I do here? I don't know. What did you do? That's when I put the bag over her face. What was the reason for that? Probably to get rid of her. To kill her, you mean? When that came out, when he fully admitted that that was an intentional act, I went from thinking there's a sick person to there's a real bastard. One of the really chilling things I heard throughout all of this, investigators asked Furlong if Jody was targeted. He said no. When they asked him, had it been any girl, you were ready. He said yes. It's just absolutely, um, you know, it, tr very chilling thing to hear. It, it almost takes your breath away to hear some of that. It does. It's hard to hear. And it sounds like there are still questions that need to be answered here with this. Right, and Jody's mother has lots of those questions as well. We actually sat down with her and heard from her for the first time since Furlong was convicted back in January.
What is it like now knowing that someone is behind bars for this? I'm glad that he's in there because, you know, what he, he killed her and that's what I wanted was whoever killed her to be arrested. I know she had a lot of friends and her death impacted a lot of people, not just her family. Furlong is also being considered in other open cases. I'm sure you guys remember Brittany Beers. Yeah. She was the six-year-old who vanished from Sturgis in 1997. We're going to look more into this and tell you the two reasons why he's being considered a person of interest in her disappearance tonight at 6. Okay. Suzanne, we'll see you then. Thank Thanks. you so much.